International. 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 Bad Boys in the Neighborhood. Yeah. Where are they, Steve? They're in Seattle. They're in Texas. They're in Tijuana. They're in Arizona. They're at the Oscars. They're doing just, they're all over the place. It's crazy time. It's it's a weird time. It is a weird time. How are you, Steve? I'm doing all right, man. I fucking, <laughs> I think I beat a rec- had a record on FetLife for an account. You did not. Did you go on it? Yeah, and I built an account. One of our, <laughs> one of our fans from last week told me what it was. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Did I mean, we lose you? Dude, is it crazy? It is so awesome, isn't it? Fucking crazy. I had an account for an hour and a half. <laughs> and they sent me an email, Steve, we're sorry to lose you so fast. You yeah. Know? Um, and I was like, I went on. Is it everything I told you it would be? And more. Right. And I, I, it's too much. I opened that door. And it was like being at Disneyland with no one there. And I was like, I can't handle this. I told you. That's why I didn't want you to know. I can't handle this. I can't. That's why I didn't want you to know. I and I, I, I built a profile. And I, Did you it, use an actual picture? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Dude, I, I've long blown my anonymity in the fucking filth world. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I'm not that guy. So to like, Adam Hunter hit me up the other day, and he's like, yeah, so I hear you'd suck five cocks to get the one hot chick. I'm like, no, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me. That's Steve. <laughs> Don't be taking my dude. I made I made an account, so I got that tweet, and then you go, oh shit, <laughs> and I instantly made an account. You know, I've been I've been fucking around the internet since '94, bro. Like it, did, you know, <laughs> I I know the I know the deal. I made an account. I was like, wow. And then what I found that was so badass about it was, it's not just about this. It's so deep. It's so next level. It's like. Hey guys, we're having an ain't like an anal roundup. People who are there's a room. There was a group of 38 people who were just obsessed with anal guys and girls, and they were all meeting at Coco's in um, Culver City. Oh yeah. And I was like, wait. And I, that's when I was like, I I went on there. I was like, okay, they're just a bunch of like busted people, all hot girls, like good, like good. Dude, it's do. crazy. It's like it's I'm it's going back what on. the internet was meant for. It's like. You know, a long time ago, there was adultfriendfinder.com, yeah, I was which on had that. to put money down and monthly. These people just created, all you got to do is throw them 10 bucks to basically help them support the thing, which allows you to watch everybody's videos. One time, $10. Yeah. And it just. Well, like, they were like, um, there was a couple meetings, and they're like, this is a family-friendly restaurant, so be cool. They were so deep in the game that they were just dressing normal, hanging out at Pit Fire Pizza in Studio City. That's where another Hold meeting Hold on, you is. went? No, but I started to go. I, I logged in, and, and I was talking to people. I like, can't wait to see you at Pit Fire Pizza. You know? It was the people who were in a gaping anal. And, and, I, and, I, and I was just like, I was like, wow, there's 33 people going to Pit Fire Pizza, and they were so deep in the game where they're like, hey, be respectful. We reserved. So, like, they're responsible, filthy people. It wasn't just, like, ragtag. It's a place like, of love. It's insane. And it, I can't. I, Stephen Randolph, cannot handle it. I, I, I tapped out of the game. That's why I told you not in an to. an hour and a half. That's why I told you not to. Literally, whatever you're into, there is somebody. There is not just a person. There is a lot of people who are into what you want, and you could all meet up with people. I can't. Even talking about this is too much. I get it, dude. So where are you going to be, Steve? Fuck, dude. I, I don't know if I'm doing hard bells tomorrow. I just, uh, let's see. I'll be at Potluck tonight. Um, I'm having fun at Pot. I'm finally having fun with stand up. I'll be at uh, Potluck tonight doing stand up. Um, I have another spot during the week. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to go down to San Diego and do a La Jolla Comedy Store. Maybe uh, try Madhouse. Get, poke around for some spots in there. Visit my dad. Just say what's up to him. Oh, and, I like. Uh, are you gonna go? Uh, if you go down, oh, forget, I'll forget. Why that. you're gonna go down? What well, I've been wanting to go down. I have to uh, get some stuff done there. I had the I did, yeah. For, so finish off. What we yeah, and do. then uh, I'll be back at the Nerdist on Sunday for my show, Palapalooza. Um, but yeah, man, I would. I just need to go down to San Diego. I I love it down there. I relax. I'm like not Hollywood Steve down there. I'm just like you know fucking wearing sandals and just eating breakfast burritos and just relaxing and being me for the first time. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you go to San Diego, it's just something. There's something about it where I just dropped my guard. San Diego is such next level. I love it. 
It's so next level. I, I, I'm like, how can I live there and still be in L.A.? No, that's what you, you and I, um, you and I went down there when we first met. It was just like everybody just. It, it's like they drop the bullshit games, and it's just like, hey, what's up, dude? What's up? It's like it's it's a real deal. But I'm my fear. I lived there off and on over the last five six years. Is I would never want. I felt myself going as soon as I'm down there, and you see the ocean, and you're drinking some coffee by the beach, and no one gives a shit about Hollywood, and you're like, wait, I don't, I don't need to go back to L.A. And I'm like, oh, and I still want, you know, I still want to accomplish some things in comedy, and I have some goals, but I'm just, it's so relaxing and so good down there. It's like. It makes me not my, – I lose my ambition because I'm like, hey, why don't I just meet a nice girl over here, go to Whole Foods, do yoga, and just fucking call it a day. Dude, I uh, I did the La Jolla Comedy Store this weekend. How was that? I sold out two shows on Dude, Saturday. Dude, fucking badass, Which is man. crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a big deal. So I drive down there, and I had I had to cancel my spot at the Comedy Store uh, in L.A. because I had to go do radio early in the morning. And so I went – and uh, I was, I don't know, man, I was just really nervous. And I went and just this, this one, uh, I went and did, I did two. Nervous about the radio? I just, I was nervous about how it was going to go. Uh-huh. You know, because. Really? You do so much fucking podcasting and radio? I know, but I just like, I just, I just really wanted to knock it out of the park. And so I ended up telling a couple stories from the CD I just recorded and just, boom, knocked it out. So then, because I used to party way back in the day, obviously, I've yeah. talked about that. I did this one radio station, and they hadn't had me on for a while. And I came in, and I Which was just- Which station? Uh, fuck, I can't remember the exact number. There's but, a really good one. 94.9 is really good down dude, there. Dude, all the radio stations yeah, shows good down music. there are fuck. Great. First of all, you get out of L.A. and you get some good old rock music again. No, yeah, they're like playing Stone Devil Pilots and like, yeah. hey, what's up, guy? Like the shit like I grew up with. Like now everything's auto-tuned with just choruses. That's all they are, are hooks yeah. now. No, they're just like, I, I remember like turning in this, uh, turn, tuning into San Diego radio because I don't listen to a lot of radio out here. It's just like, hey, give it them. But you turn down <laughs> and it's just like guys are having fun. Like, hey, we're going to be getting fucked up at the belly up. Come down there and fucking smoke some. And you're like, what? And you're, and because I'm older, man, I, you know, I've been doing comedy for I'm almost right behind 20 you. years, right? Yeah. You know, it's like when I started doing like the the road and have to do morning, like it was like, it was, it was super clean. Then you hear what these guys are talking about. They're like different, different words for snatches, muff, bang. You're like, this is radio. You could say it's like, it's crazy. Oh really? And now the Deadpool is blown up. It's just going to get crazier mm -hmm. because it's all based on the standards of the community. Anyways. So I went on there and the I did really well. The community's pretty open. And he goes, he goes, Sam, he goes, Sam. You're doing good. You look good. You look way better than last time you were in here. Oh, and damn, go, really? Oh, oh, was it bad? He goes, I'm just saying, you look way better than when you were than when you were in as I go, than when you were in here last time. I go, do I owe you guys a, uh, an amends? Should I make it right here on the radio? Oh. Do I owe you guys an amends for coming here? Up all night, out of my brain. We all coked out. Oh, morning yeah. radio. Yeah, way oh. back in the day. And you just hope you knuckle through it, and you just. So now it's like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm, you know, I'm sober. I just show up. I, cr I, you know, and I knocked it out of the park. I got big laughs, and it was great, dude. And you know, I'm just saying, like, I just. Do you think that helped uh, pack both shows? Oh, I w without a doubt. Like the first show I did, so I told radio three, does work. That one hundred percent. It's my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I got a good name. People. People know me, but if I get on that radio and it, you know, you know I could do some damage. And boss. you flame, and you flame throw oh, that. Oh yeah, that I told hops three over. stories. They were going crazy. There's this one girl on the show. On the first show, her name is Ashley. She's so hot. Uh, a comedian? No, she's a radio personality. Oh, okay. She's so hot, and she put on a couple LBs, which is I don't want to say this in case somebody tells her that. What's she an LB? Her, pounds. Oh, okay. She's a couple. Yeah, yeah, that's looks fine. So good, but I know, like for girls, she's like, uh. You know, they're like... No, I like that. I, dude, her ass was so fat, and it was so inspiring. <laughs> and just like... And there were so many great asses at, in, in La Jolla this weekend. It was so... It's great. I'm like, why... Like, I know a lot of my friends who are really big comics now. Yeah. Like, they don't do the La Jolla Comedy Store anymore. How come? Because they're just doing bigger rooms, and it's just like... I would never stop doing La Jolla comedy. No, what, what do you? Is that still? I guess if is, you're married with kids, it's like, why do I need to come down here now? You know, it, 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 w like what kind of money if you're packing that up? Maybe I shouldn't discuss that. Yeah, Bad boys don't. Real, but yeah, I'll tell you this: La Jolla pays extremely well. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. If you're packing that out for two shows, there's like, no that's bonuses, worth the drive. but it p plays. With, I have a soft spot for the La Jolla comedy store. I, I think it's great, man. I it's love like, it. It's like it's like my, my it's one of my homes, you know. So like they that pay really. First, that was the first place. Bad boys don't don't share stories, but we have a. <laughs> 
the dude the first week i met you dude we uh you go, let's come down to La Jolla, and I bomb there. Do you remember that? Like, so, I, dude, I had only been doing comedy, like, 40 days. I meet Sam at a 12-step meeting. I shared something about, like, really getting back into comedy because, you know, it's it's scary sober. And Sam goes, uh, you know what? I'm going to take you on the road with me, dude. And I was like, he's like, how long have you been doing comedy? I'm like, a long time, bro. And I was like, dude, I've been doing comedy. Thir- I, did, <laughs> I did, like, the Ha Ha Cafe open mic seven times, dude, <laughs> really, honestly. And uh, and, and I wa- went there with, I think, you and Tony Hinscliffe, and, and we went down to the Hoy store. I had a really good set. I did my first real show. I won a competition, just randomly got entered in this competition, won the Ha Ha fucking you know 250 people packed in there murdered it just off off nerves nothing planned dude just right, you, right. You, you couldn't do that just, again i was like oh, good old uh, hope yeah hope someone fell down the front row and i was like look at that you know just it was a perfect right, thing i, I want right, i want to right. know you're texting and it hurts my feelings and i'm not um i'm just making sure i send our guest who's coming in all the info i already did don't worry about it okay. bro i got it you said that i kept that that notes thing i just okay. sent it out to all the people so i i fucking went you know went crazy i was feeling all high high and mighty and then we go down to the to the la jolla store and then um you go go and do five and there's five drunk marines in the the back and i was like i got this and i told the same like jokes that killed in front of 200 people and they're like you suck and i was like i said jersey and did my big punch <laughs> and they're like yeah we said you suck and i remember i got i got off the stage i wanted to hang myself you and tony ate burritos i couldn't even eat a burrito the next morning i'm just i'm just fucking like out on the patio i, I, I didn't know who tony was yet you know tony's like what are you what are you so sad about? I'm like last night he's like, You're still thinking about that? Dude, I like went into a depression. It was like so humbling, you know. Yeah. The, the, and and uh but but I we can't give all the details, but we went back in there after hours. Do you remember? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we had some- Angela? Dude, that yo, was great. Hey, if we talk about that, no, we're not gonna talk about it. Let's just say we went. We... So can we can we move on from there? <laughs> yeah, okay, so, dude, that was so that was next level fun. Where I was like, wow, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. Let's just say. Uh, there's there's a stage show and there's no comics on stage. You got two random girls and and they just started diking out and well we all just watched in the crowd. Dude, I've done crazy shit in the oh, no, comedy but just, store. I look over and you and you and Skippy are just sitting there and we're all we're all sitting. It was like some uh, David Lynch shit. There's like floodlights on the girls. They're just diking out and you're like just sit down, dude. And I'm like whoa, <laughs> like. And, and, <laughs> Dude, you don't know when I used to. I couldn't believe. It. Dude, I'll never, we all I just feel start real. jerking off. I, we all start jerking off. I, I'm sorry. It's so good of a story. I can't just contain it. Uh, I I do the road a lot, and I have this reputation of being crazy. And sometimes, yeah. like I used to make crazy happen. Now, I, if crazy happens, I'll let it happen. You'll, you'll allow it. But I don't. I don't go for it. Any, like you don't I don't provoke crazy. Yeah, I don't. I, I like back at dude. Weird crazy shit, dude. Well, I caught you at the tail end of that. Cause Tony, like, did did I ever tell you the the story about uh, Tony Hinchcliffe? Mm-mm. Uh, oh, anyways, can I give my one date and I'll tell the story? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm going to be at the Omni Store this weekend, hopefully. I'm going to be doing the uh, the secret show with uh, Red Band. When is that? And Tony, uh, and Red Band and uh, Tony and Joe Rogan on Wednesday. Jason Tebow's hosting that. I guess so, yeah. I think I'm working the room. God, I'd love five minutes. Anyways. Um, I, I don't have any say. I'm, I'm such just, a I'm fucking, fucking extra in that story. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I love you, dude. I used to have a time where I could pull it, but I am not. You just do your guy. five. You're like, thank you. <laughs> I'll do my 12 to 15 and I'll get the fuck out. You know, uh, th- there's this great story. I, I, well, anyways, La Jolla was great. Very thankful to everybody. Uh, no, we cover that. What's the Tony story? I, I love a good Tony uh, story. I just want to say, I just recorded uh, a CD. I haven't listened to the quality of it, but I'm doing something very special. I'm going to re- edit this CD. I'm still working on putting out an hour. So I'm going to try to shoot an hour, but I want to edit this CD, and it's going to be a very special CD. Mm. It's going to be a double CD. I'm going to get a double album out. And basically, it's one of me killing, and then the other CD is going to be called Late Show Friday. And it's going to be about the, the, the 1030 show on Friday. Yes. We're five minutes in, I said, Start realizing this crowd sucks ass, and I just pound on them for fucking forty five minutes. I love that. I love that idea. So I'm doing that. There's gonna be a bonus uh, track on the on the actual great thing called the the the, the, the diabolical. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a bonus full double CD. I'm gonna be putting out it's called fucking the awesome, diabolical. Man. So that's coming out soon. Basically, what happened was uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, myself. And I forget who else was there. There's one more person there. Why do I want to say Jason Tebow? Because he's always in the mix when anything weird's going on. So the three of us go, oh, no. Was it Nodder or was it Tebow? Oh, 
It might have been Jason T. I don't know. So it's definitely me and Tony. We go do this gig, right? Tony brings this crazy, weird Mexican Asian chick, <laughs> right? She just shows up at the show. We're all hanging out. It's uh, Janelle who works there. I like to know, yeah. Tony, this weird Asian chick, and then suddenly this redheaded comes and shows up at the show. And she's hanging out, and we're like, okay, there's you can never tell hot chicks to go. And she brings her b- brother with her. And we're like, okay, you brought your brother. Where was this at? This was at the comedy store. Then we go to oh, a yeah. bar, and they just start drinking. They're drinking. I'm not drinking. Everybody's drinking. They're getting shit-faced. We go, they're like, can we come back to the condo? I'm like, yeah, come back to the condo, right? Mm-hmm. This this girl's, the redheaded, the redhead's brother just starts going through our fridge and he grabs a bag of carrots and he just starts eating carrots, the carrots. he just starts eating the carrots That's right a weirdo right just yeah you're drunk you're just want to eat something yeah yeah so we're drunk and we're just hanging out and the the redhead is drunk and starts getting nasty like mean with janelle and everyone's like this is weird and she's like barking at her yeah and we're like calm down man we're just all hanging out she's barking 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 because she wants attention from us, yeah. right? She thinks Janelle's getting all attention. She wants attention. Out of nowhere, this Asian Mexican girl goes, "Do you guys mind if I do stand up for you naked?" <laughs> oh my I'm like, god! Has anyone ever said no to that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, "Can I do it naked? I just want to do it naked." I'm like, "Okay." So she goes in the back. And she just strips naked, comes out, and this girl starts barking again. We're like, listen, I don't know if you understand this. What's going on right this now? This girl, you guys are playing poker right now, and she just went all in. Yeah. You have no cards to play. Other it, than doing that. Yeah. The, you have to beat naked. Yeah, else we don't care. Yeah, or else no one's paying attention Yeah, if you're like, you. UFOs came down, we'd be like, that's great. We'll hold that story yeah. for, for the morning time, you know? Yeah. So she, so this girl starts to do, na- starts telling jokes, and it's crazy jokes. She starts talking about how she thinks she caused 9-11. She's not even joking. I just got hard. <laughs> She's like, I caused 9-11 because I went to the House of Congress, I, the, the library of Congress. I talked to our forefathers. I did listen to them and because of that, 9-11 happened. So and you're like... And what's Tony doing during all this? Supporting Laughing. Like, dude, that's... He's funny, dude, but... She's laughing. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a good time. Suddenly, the redhead... We look over. The redhead's brother is down and he is throwing up. Oh. Carrots. Just orange. Yeah. Nobody... Everyone's like, what do we do? We want to help, but there's a naked chick telling... Horrible 9-11 jokes. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a tough call. That is a tough call. So who's the nice person? Janelle gets up, walks over, starts cleaning up the... Oh. Sh- right? So the girl's doing jokes, and we're and Tony is just like, uh, Simon from American Idol, yeah, bring it better. You got to trim that joke a little bit. You got to trim it. That's too long. Get to the punchline already, baby. Right? Yeah. So... So, so, um, this is gonna get weird, dude. This gets no, really keep weird. Going. Keep going. This gets really weird. Yeah, of weird. course. That's what's the. Has our podcast? It, we've already flamethrowed so hard. Chelsea's not here. I mean, we've already lost people from it. <laughs> so, so Janelle's cleaning up the throw up, right? Yeah. Uh, the girl's done doing jokes. She's like, "Can I sit on your lap?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So she sits on my lap. She's like, "Am I getting you hard?" I'm like, "No." Do you want to? She's like, "Yeah." So out of nowhere, right, she, she just starts playing with my dick in front of everybody. The 9-11 girl. The 9-11 girl starts playing with my dick in front and of I'm everybody. And I'm now officially rock hard. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then, I don't know, somehow she's like, she's like, so Tony goes, you know how I met her? She came to the comedy store, and she was telling me that she used to party with Tom Sizemore. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I used to smoke meth with him back in the day and I used to be a hooker and I used to smoke meth and we used to hang out and he, we would have sex as we smoked meth. I'm like, you like to have sex? She's like, yeah, I love it. She's like, oh, oh we my. should have it. She's like, you want to? And I'm like, what? So she zips out my pants and in front of everybody she starts blowing me, right? Everybody's laughing. Oh my no, 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 God. let me say this. So she sits on my lap naked, right? Why haven't I heard this story before? This girl, this, this crazy chick, the redhead, is licking a popsicle She's like, oh, that, the, the naked chick's like, oh, that's cute. That pops good. I love it. I bet you it tastes good. The girl's like, I want to put it in your pussy. She's like, okay. So the girl takes the pops go and starts, bla- like, oh fucking dildoing Where's this Where's her chick. brother at? Her, 
she, he's passed out. Starts oh. dildoing the fucking 911 chick. I'm so glad my sister is not a slut. Fucking, for, with her fucking, with a, and it's melting all over the place. Oh right? my God. I'm like, oh my God. And, you're, and she's sucking you off? Yeah, yeah. What's Tony doing? Just watching? Tony's just, oh my God. What are you <laughs> going on there? Well, Tony's narrating. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> So we're like, so then the girl starts plunging it really hard. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it slow. Don't plunge this chick oh. that hard with it. She's like, what? And she starts barking at fucking Janelle. I'm like, calm down. So anyways, the girl gets done. He's like, I'm like, you should suck my dick. She's like, okay. So the girl starts talking my dick. Janelle comes over and starts fucking... Are you kidding starts me? Starts taking her head and fucking starts having her... Oh, I love that, I cannot stop laughing, I love that. After, so anyway, Janelle, really? Yeah. You don't know who people are. So then, then this girl starts barking at Janelle, and I go fucking nuts. Why don't you just let, like, barking playfully or... No, like, getting angry. Like saying what? Just saying mean fucking shit. While to she's her. forcing yeah. her to fuck And I go, listen, lady. Sam, that's the kind of porn I watch. Why would I you go, stop that? This is chick is our friend. You were invited here. She fucking cleaned <laughs> up. Your fucking brother's throw up. You fucking like it. Get the fuck out of here. And she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, get the fuck out. Why right, this girl's keep... plunging me, right? I'm yelling and screaming at people. So she grabs her brother and fucking leaves, right? Everyone's kind of over it. A bunch of people go out, and I just start banging her right there on the fucking couch like nothing's happening. Oh, my God. And then we fucking kick her out. Everybody oh, took amazing. a turn hitting it, and then they started <sighs> off. <laughs> wow, dude. That is That's a horrible story. I can't believe I just told that. That's okay. That's what we do. This happened like 13 years ago. <laughs> so, so long ago. Oh, man. So that was my story. I've told that was, you, dude, all you told, we've all been telling that's some awesome, awesome stories. That's awesome. That's a great story. I love story, that. Stories like that back in my day used to happen all the time. Like, I, I used How do you to go back pay. to civilian life after that? When have I been in civilian life? I've always been crazy. I don't know. You know, I'm asking for both of us. How do we get to civilian life after experiencing stuff like that? Well, the like key that? is never to go back to civilian life. To be successful enough, you just fucking kill it. But enough about us. Let's get into uh, super excited about having this guy on the show. <laughs> Love this he, guy. Uh, he's one. Of, I think he's one easily one of the funniest guys in L.A., and I'm oh, not just man. saying that. I, I agree. He, he kills on stage. He's always a killer, no matter where you put him in the lineup. He crushes. Uh, he was on the, the Naughty Show podcast. Yes. And now he's back on the International Bad Boys Contest, contest podcast with a contest. bunch of great uh, stand-up, uh, great stories. Uh, please welcome my good friend Owen Smith, everybody. What up? Woo! Oh, thanks, for not, thanks for wearing the glasses. Steven, You're I in saw y'all wearing them. So yeah, that's how we do it. Yeah, he's got aviators. Yeah. Is that what I got? We yeah. go international bad boys. Aviator. How are you? Um, fantastic. Before we get into uh, some of the fun stories, you because we're we've what been uh, telling people you're coming on, and everybody's pretty excited. So is this like real time? This is this is both airing Camera? live and we're going to put it out tonight. What kind of cameras are those? That's crazy. Those are shit. called. What are those cameras, Aaron? They're Logitech uh, 1080p. So that's daily motion, and it's plugged into something. Yeah, and it's ru- it streams right in. I would have shaved. I didn't know. No, no, no. I should have known fucking with you is always a camera. You're a, you look great. <laughs> you look great. I. Oh, and so uh, real quick before you get into it, <laughs> mm-hmm. where can they find you all over the internet? Yo, this is what? real important. Internet, internet world. Yeah. This is what I need y'all to do. I need you to text the word comedy to the number four four two two two. You text that. Everybody that texts me. Uh, that I'm going to send you a, a free half-hour version of my hour special. Oh, awesome. And I'm going to send you four free tracks to my new comedy album. That's be Are you March, dropping the March CD? 3rd. Yeah, March 3rd. I love it. Uh, called Good Luck, Everybody. So, so text me with comedy that. to one more time. By the text way, the that will comedy. be the name of... We, well, should we have... I want... Is that be the name of the episode? Or it should, should be. We, Good Luck, Everybody. Yes, yes. Good Luck, Everybody. That's with, how I feel about life. Good okay. Luck, Everybody. Com- text comedy? Yeah, the word comedy. C-O-M-E-D-Y to the number 44... Two two two. So it's two great. fours, three twos. Will you text awesome. me that four, and I'll put it two, in two, the two. thing? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll text it to you. Text it to me. Yeah, Owen. Yeah, Owen yeah. tweet the so fuck funny, out of it. man. Owen, yeah. so funny, so good vibe. Just Thanks, has a glow man. around him. Is it at Owen Smith? I, I, I yeah, yeah. OwenSmithLive.com. But you'll get all that once but you Twitter text But Twitter and all Instagram, all, all that. Owen Smith, the number four real on okay. Twitter, Instagram. That's so cool. You could just text and get and just shoot it over now. That's really cool. People will do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. If you guys are bored in your break rooms, you want some more comedy. Owen Smith always kills. Yeah, always funny. Always. 
always great stories. I'm he's putting out an album some, too, man. I know. I heard. I heard on one of the. I'm so excited, dude. Y'all don't know how funny this dude is. Like, <sighs> God damn it. It's. I just love watching you work. He can make anybody. He laughs. He's so vulnerable. You know what I'm and doing? Then, and then he has a whole thing when he goes after the crowd, too. Like, <laughs> So you got to either hear his stories or if he's coming for you, it's either it's a win-win. Coming well, Owen, he, yeah. he's putting out a double CD. One is his set, and then the other one is him going after it. Oh, so That's you get exactly both. what he's doing. <laughs> this is Friday brilliant. night. Uh, Late Show Friday, it's called, and it's about uh, when they, you get that Late Show Friday and, and everybody turn it on them. That's and when we make just, all and, our mistakes too. Late yeah. Show Friday, I and mean, you just kill people, right? Oh my God, that's yeah, so right? great. It's fun. So uh, it's the best title ever. I'm really excited that you're yeah. putting out because I do think you're like one of the Thanks, best man. writers there. I think you're. Thanks, a, man. You know, the, uh, you know, it's it's like writing is is a lost form. I feel in comedy right now. I think yeah. a lot of it is like crazy looks and. You yeah. know, and just people laughing at their own jokes and just weird stuff. And you're like, you you know, you can throw you anywhere in the lineup, you murder, dude. Thanks, man. You know, and it is a crazy time at the comedy store. It's a lot of fucking. So much fun, man. So much fun packed. I mean, like, it was so weird because I had a sol two sold out shows in La Jolla, right? Wow. On Saturday. But then I saw your stuff going, this is the busiest I've ever seen the comedy I, store. I, wow. It was the busiest I've ever seen the comedy store yeah. on uh, Saturday night. So, uh, Louis C.K. rented out the room. He did an awesome thing where it made my job a as a door guy inside so easy. He had a company, this company, and I and I gave the number to Steve-O, my brother, because yeah. there's such a problem with cameras. Mm -hmm. Is they come, they're real nice. They come and, and they set up right when you're you're going in. So we're giving them, hey, two drink minimum, blah blah blah. Just one dude with a bunch of pouches. They look like uh, uh, sunglass pouches. You know when you buy mm -hmm. sunglass little felt uh, pouches that they slip your cell phone in. You can't use your cell phone. They button it up. And you can't get it unbuttoned without his little device. So you go sit in and it just... Oh, but he takes it... You take your you, phone you with you? You take your phone with you. You just can't use it. So now no one's texting. It makes the show better because no one's oh taking pictures. Oh, my God. Oh, and no one's <laughs> taking pictures and no one's texting. So at first I thought it was, oh, it's just for the pictures. But people are actually sitting down, laughing at everything. A <laughs> hundred... I watched it. I was like... Focused. A hundred... No like one's going... like clubs used to be. No one's going like this. Everybody's focused. And then no one... Not one person complained. They said, oh, okay, cool. And everybody just had a better time. So this guy's company, uh, I guess Louis, like, like rented him out and he'll he he'll come to your shows and do that for you you know for a fee and i i just think it's 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 amazing Brilliant. but but two louis shows so chris rock opening up mm -hmm, for louis mm -hmm. so i mean the Did line Chappelle was, go in that show Ch no Chappelle was next door so OR, yeah. Chappelle, you got vince vaughn hanging out you got courtney love uh oh, just hanging out i yeah. mean it was like there was so many i had to get out of there because at, at a certain point i'm like I'm not going to be one of these people just kind of fall. I'm not, that's not me. So I was like, this is so much. I was there for four hours, but wow. the line went up. The line went past the Mondrian. I had to like give everybody wristbands. Damn. People didn't get in. There was the line, the line went uh, uh, to, to Pink's. Mm. Almost, almost the things, yeah, to that street right before Pink's. That, that you it, so people aren't from LA, they might not be familiar with. That's not Pink's, good not, too. Uh, uh, not Pink's. Uh, not Pink's, no, you but, uh, Pink, uh, dot. Pink Dot. Pink Dot. That's, Pink dot. That's, that's three blocks. Three or four. Three. Yeah, that's, yeah it's at that's least crazy. It's at least. It that's was two, so much. Where I was just steps. like. It was crazy, and yeah. so that was just the one room they going. They filled up their Fitbit quota walking yeah. <laughs> they were in the back of the <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the back of the line to the front. It was crazy, man. It's, it's wow. It was just so there's so many people on the property just over flooding. Like I like I just like you know there's only so much you could do with security people. I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> I yeah, think it's man. amazing. I uh, comedy's back, baby. Comedy is back. You got to get back. a piece of it, and that's back kind of been what I've been way. working on. But That's why you want to text comedy to 44222. Get some of this. <laughs> I, dude, we'll put it you, out. Man. We'll put it's it out. Great. We'll get some of this. We'll put it yeah. out, dude. We'll it's definitely bananas. put that it's fucking bananas. out, dude. Uh, let's talk about, you know, uh, how long have you been a regular at the store? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so bad with timelines, man. I can tell you I was writing when Everybody Hates Chris, and that went from, like, 2007 to 2010. And I was afraid of the store because when I was 19, I came out here and um, on my spring break, me and my boy Floyd, shout out to Floyd. Shout out and, Floyd. Um, and Floyd pretended to be my manager. <laughs> love it, and we dude. Went to, um, and this is when you're 19 and you feel this. Like, that's why I love this YouTube generation and these Vine cats because they, at the age of 19, they 17, 18, fuck. you don't give a fuck. And, and so there were no cameras like to follow the shit that I was doing, but I was doing the same shit. It just wasn't being, you know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't th those platforms fl platforms weren't out yet so me and Floyd we came out and we went to like VH1 some shit and we talked to one comedian and we said where can we get up and he told me uh, um, shit Robin Harris had a room um, but um, and um, but what he was wasn't it mixed nuts anymore. no 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 the comedy act Union. theater the comedy act theater in 
Compton maybe or in some and then and then the townhouse in Inglewood. So I went to those rooms and Floyd acted like my manager and I got up. Chris Tucker was the host of the uh, Comedy Act Theater. And uh, him, this other dude named Bill Hill, who was from D.C., uh, cause he had on like the DC uniform, he had on gray New Balance. Those motherfuckers kept a perpetual joint lit, <laughs> and Bill would hold it <sighs> at the edge of the stage while uh, Chris Tucker went on stage. God damn man, and this is when he was at his <laughs> peak, right? Wow. And then he came down, took the joint. Then Bill would go up or what have you, and then I got to go on that show. And I did all right. I did good. Were you nervous? And, yeah, this was at the time when I took a shit. Before I went on stage every time. I and still do Floyd, that. Floyd called it christening in the room. Like, did, you, <laughs> did you christen the room? Yeah. If you don't so, perform, you don't know that it's either puking, peeing, shitting. Peeing, like, just peeing, you're shit. on in five minutes. Something. You're like, oh, yep. man. So at the townhouse, there was no door for the men's room. It was a curtain. Oh, I hate that, So I had dude. to take a shit. And I'm holding the curtain, <laughs> and, and the that. curtain rod, of course, falls down. <laughs> Boom. So I'm taking the shit while the line is coming in. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> see me sitting on the toilet. I see them. They see me. I see them. It's like, oh, shit. And I try to, like, and, I, and my dumb ass, I lifted up my foot like it was an invisible door. Like I was, <laughs> and I, so I take the shit, and then uh, um, Floyd talks. I get on stage. When I get on stage, somebody's like, man, this dude that was shitting, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. Yeah. <laughs> the shit dude's funny. Yeah, yeah, so I went up, had a good set there. So we would jazz. So then we were like, let's go to the comedy clubs. So we went to <laughs> the improv, walked around, just said, hey, man, I'm a comic visiting. And they were cool, walked around, went to the Laugh Factory, comic visiting. They were a little snottier, but they let me, like, peek in, then I had to go. Then we came to the comedy store, and this dude named Chewy was standing there. Oh, God. Didn't know him. I just went up to him. Hey, man. Um, comedian. Just like to take a look at the room. Do you know how many motherfuckers tell me? That? Like, he <laughs> went off on me like that. And it made me feel really small. Yeah. And I just did not like the store because of that experience. Do you know how he got fired? Nah, I ain't know nothing about him. But he I chased me. I was supposed to do a spot. Wow. And he would terrorize me every night. Every night I would go there, he'd scream and yell, shout at me. And I one night on stage... I diabolically came up with a plan of how to get re rid of him. So I shit, I just call him a, I just go off. Yeah. The sound guy, Dan, at the time, we didn't get along. We're great friends now. Danny? Then, Danny, yeah. Yeah. we didn't get along. Danny runs and tells wow. Chewy this. The next day I show up, I'm chilling, and all of a sudden I see Chewy, and he's like, come here, motherfucker. I'm a retard, bum, bum, and wow. chases me <laughs> up the stairs, Was he a then big dude? back down. He seemed big, but it, when I saw him, I'm going to tell you, finish the story when he finishes this. Yeah. He chases me down. I'm like, hey, dude, I got to do my stuff. Fuck you. You ain't doing your spot. He runs me off. Wow. Next, I, I call up. I go, listen, dude. I'm all comedy store. I'm a team player. Yeah. That motherfucker threatened my life, and I know he's selling coke out of the front. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Right. That day he got fired, and he never got brought back. Man. And then it was so interesting. What was his position there? He was he was a lock guy. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the next day, everyone's like, Chewy got fired? Oh, my God. And then people started parking there, and nobody was getting yelled at. Nobody's, And everyone's like... Hold, hold up. We didn't have to go through any of this? Yeah, man. It was crazy. So I got there probably right before you did that. And he was so me. He was, I didn't know the dude. I just remember I never forgot him. And when I got, when I moved here in 2000, I avoided the comedy store like a plague. Yeah. Right? I was afraid of it because I didn't want to bump into that dude. I just didn't, when you, when you're about to go express your art, you don't want, you want as few obstacles as possible for me. You know, I just want to get to the stage. What wow. I'm about to say is vulnerable enough. I don't want wow. to fight you. You know what I mean? To prove mm -hmm. me, I, that's just not my my personality. So, I avoided that place, right? And then in 2007, 2008, Chris Rock was working out stuff for his the thing that he <coughs> did when he when he recorded in Africa, America, yeah, yeah, yeah. South, I remember South that. Africa. I, I can't remember what country in Africa he did. And so he goes, uh, "Yo, I'm going to the store." So I was like, "All right." And so he told me come through. Oh, I think I invited myself. I probably invited myself. <laughs> he just told me he was going to work out at the store. So I went. And um, I learned from being on the lot how to walk into places like you belong. Because I was petrified when I went back up to the store. Because I was afraid I was going to walk into Chewy. But I saw everybody walking around the back. So I just walked in the back and just sat in the back. Like confident. Ain't nobody say shit to me. And then um, when I saw Chris work out in the OR, I was like, oh, shit. This is the only place in L.A. where you can be an artist. Because when you go up at the improv, your shit got to be polished. Yeah. When you go up at the Laugh Factory, it's, you know, it's another thing that they're doing over there. 
But when you go up at the comedy store, they let you find it. And I was watching them find it. And I was thirsting for that. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I decided to get out my own way. I said, fuck who's in the way. I got to get into the store. So I just started coming up and coming like every day. And I bumped into Tommy, man. And Tommy, you know, people say what they want to say about him. But I never met another person who loved comedy as much as he did and knew as much about it. There him. is definitely something to that. Yeah, he knew everybody. He he had an opinion about everybody's skill set. But he just knew and loved talking about comedy. So I said, okay, this is a dude that you got to let talk. Right. Yeah. So I just let him talk, let him talk. And I was listening, you know, and then he was like, come on Sunday, I give you two minutes. So I was doing two minutes for weeks. Wow. Healing them two minutes because I've been doing comedy since fucking 92. Right. You just know how to get it's right into problem. it. Yeah. But then <sighs> the OR is, is unlike any other room in the country. Hell, yeah. Because 100%. Then, yeah. Scary. Then, so I started getting like, you know, I said, and I decided, I said, I don't have no ego. Fuck this. So every time I went and did the two minutes, I parked on top of the hill and I walked down and I enjoyed the whole process, right? And then uh, one day he goes, hey, oh, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. And, and, and 10, I bet. I'm about to kill this shit. That's cool. So I went up. I did my 10 minutes. Nigga, I had dry mouth, oh. uh, sweat, pump, pump, pump. I bombed. Like, what the fuck's happening? How come? Because I was pushing. I was doing that road shit. I was doing the hey everybody shit shit that worked everywhere else. I was trying to charm. That's the OR, dude. And I've seen everybody get humbled yeah, in there. It's Who? a it's a holds a reflection up to your art. I've it seen holds, Daniel Tosh he yeah, did. It holds David a mirror Terrell. up to your art. So at that time for me, I learned, oh, so when you step on this stage, you have to know what you came to say. And um because it's like it the OR forces you to stay in it. It, for me, it exposes. Me too. Yeah, yeah. It exposes. Weakness. Yeah, it exposes all of your weaknesses. So my weakness, because I always got off on being charming and likable and all that shit, and I, I would hear high laughter, and I would just skate on to the next piece. Or made me sit there uh. and figure it out. I was like, "Fuck, Tommy ain't gonna never have me back." <laughs> and so then he, I was back to two minutes for a little bit, and then uh, I got another ten, I think, or I had, a, or I had a fake showcase like. It was like you were on call to fight crime. Like the motherfucker would call you. Hey, your showcase is tonight. You get in the car. And I got all the way to the store. Oh, it's not happening. M oh. M M Mitzi's not feeling good. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Oh, my stomach hurts. Class. You're just saying yeah. that right now. My stomach. People have like, no clue. You're yeah. going to the octagon tonight. Oh, no. Not, you're like, do you understand I didn't eat for yeah. five hours before? Like, crazy, wow, man. Wow, I'm so glad you're sharing this. Crazy. I oh. Yeah. And so, now, so you, you I was showcased... the last class that Mitzi approved. Pat, oh, so you were yeah. approved by the queen, which yeah, is a huge thing. Yeah. God, you yeah. guys are lucky, Can man. Can I just real quick before you yeah. go on, that people don't understand how hard it was because Mitzi, <coughs> over the years, like, she doesn't come around anymore, yeah. but when she still was coming around, it was an event. Like, right. everyone be like, it would almost be like someone announcing the crowd for Mitzi's coming! Yeah. And it would just <laughs> fucking <laughs> ripple through yes, everybody. <laughs> and everybody was out. Oh, it's like it was like you were in church and everyone's like, Jesus just showed up. Act busy, act busy, right? Oh, wow. So wow. everyone be and the whole key was to get a second with her so she remembered your face, so you might get a spot at some point. Might get a spot. Now the showcasing is really hard because she sits in the back and she watches you. You have to pray to God you have one guy hosting who likes you yes. because he might give you a shit intro. Yes. And then you're walking up and going, this motherfucker right here. Yeah. So now you get your intro. You got three minutes. You walk up. Yeah. Now a million things have to happen for this to go right. It's crazy. First of all, she has to pay attention. There are older comics who are dying for spots. Their spots are going. They know if Mitzi's there, they can get in front of her and someone will swoop. Right into her, right? right like talking to her while yeah. you're. Oh and my no, now she God! What a fucking bad yeah. move. The comedy store is the perfect <clears throat> metaphor for show business. People will whisper so, as I'm going up on stage, "You're gonna bomb." Like people don't understand. Perfect <laughs> metaphor for show business. I saw early on that if you could make it in the store, you can make it in show business. Great. As a comedian, coming from the ilk that we right, come from, right, right. because of all that goes on shamelessly, like everybody there is not shy about their agenda. They not shy about if they like you or don't. Yes, true. You know, pe most people are on something anyway, so they feel a little freer to yeah. even tell you about yourself. <laughs> It's just, it's the rawest shit. So what people say about you or about your character or whatever when you're not around, that's kind of going to be how you're going to be at a larger level right, right, in right. this business of right, show right. is how I feel. So right. I love the store for that. I love the store for that. It was like it was like a small mini 
you know, class, you know what I'm saying, in, in the life of show business that you're going to have as an independent like us, you know what right, I mean, like right, as, right, as a right, comedian. Right. So, so then I finally got the showcase, and my showcase got moved from the OR to the main room. I'd never performed in the main room at the store, so my first time performing in the main room was a showcase to be on there, and I loved it. I was grounded. The shit was dope. I made the room feel small, and I'm going to tell you what the comedy store did for me, man. When uh, Russell Peters took me on the road with him years later, not years, maybe 2010, and I did Radio City Music Hall with him. Wow. And I went to sound check. When you see Radio City Music Hall empty, you start going, how the fuck am I going to play this? <laughs> wow. How fuck? many people is that? Russ told me it's 8,000 sold out both nights, right? Ugh. And it goes straight up, straight up, kind of out shit? and up and around. And you're like... How the fuck do I play this? Wow. And your first instinct is, do I run around? Do I make so they see me? And then they see me? And then I was like, fuck it, man. Let me go back to that OR training. I go, I'm going to stand still. Because mm. the way they had the shit lit, it was dark. And it was just like the OR. I bought 8000 to me. That's wow, awesome. dude. dude. That, that is me awesome. coming here just yeah. to hear that. It that wasn't like If you guys are comics, this yeah. is this is Comedy 101. I'm learning right now. I'm a new comic. If you're a fan of the podcast, he, these guys both, Sam and Owen, are spitting out gold right now for yeah, anybody man. who's studying stand-up comedy. You know why yeah. the comedy store, yeah, uh, the Did OR? I cut you off? Are you still no, more? Yeah, no. that's awesome, dude. The reason it's... And for me, is the comedy store is so hard is that, and I've said this before, but it's basically you have to foul whoever just murdered. Yeah. There's no host where you can go, hey, man, do a couple minutes. Yeah. No, 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 no. They love like, to put you in the front. Hey, you pan. cocksuckers, I just killed for 13 minutes. I just crushed fest. All right, man. I'm Joey Diaz. Please welcome <sighs> Sam Tripoli. No, like, slow, but just get nope. me right up there. And you're like, okay, yeah. I'm walking into a five o'clock fire. How do I deal with this? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of headliners, and I love everybody, some headliners don't bring the strongest acts to follow. Yeah. And they, it's your show. You can do whatever you want. Right. So, like, they'll do a pop in the OR, and they're like, they'll get thrown in. Like, you aren't following some simple open mic or you decide to bring. You're following, like, this guy's got a TV show. Yeah. That guy just did an hour. He's considered one of the greatest to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. You gotta follow there. that shit, man. Yeah, man. And I, it's I, so funny how you mature as a comedian because, like, when I first started, I used to be like, man. Um, <coughs> I mean, I didn't know any better, but I remember I had this experience. I grew up in Maryland, right, PG County, Maryland, and I started at this comedy club called um, Greenbelt Comedy Connection. And there was this real big headliner back then named Chris Thomas, and he's still doing it. He's the mayor of Rap City, right? And one time he did. He was headlining. And uh, he called, we got a call from the club, me and my friend Mike Brooks saying he was going to come down early. Can we come after him? And uh, Mike was like, yeah, 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 Joe, we'll be there. I never knew this, man. We went up after a headliner had done 45 minutes. This is how arrogant we were. We thought we could go up and kill. <laughs> man, we talk about bombing so goddamn bad. So I always had that memory. And so I used to be like, man, I just want to get to the place where I could comfortably follow, you know, some of the greats, right? And the OR, man, you get forced into it. And I remember I went up after Chris Rock one time, after he slayed. And then everybody stayed for me, and I slayed. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, okay, good. Because he's doing what he does, and I'm doing what I do. And you, you got to stay right in your pocket. Stay in dude. your pocket. And it helps you, it grounds you as an artist. Like, you know, man, what he does is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. But what I'm about to do is phenomenal, too. And I'm about to give it to these people. And that's why if y'all want it, text comedy to 44222. We will. We will. I'll do it. Do yeah. you, when did you realize you were great? When did you become really comfortable with your comedic talents? Wow. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to be honest with you. I just recently got yeah. to the point where it's like, I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to go, because, you know, I used to be so dirty. I mean, I'm yeah. still, like, really uh, edgy and stuff like that. But yeah. there was a time when that was really, like, nobody was doing that. And the crowds weren't ready for that. And right. I had to learn how to just get them going. And, like, there was a chance it was going to be a bomb. Yeah. I mean, it was a very real chance. Like, over the last, like, year and a half, two years. And we're talking guys, I've been almost doing it 20-something years. Yeah, man. That. I just now got the point where I'm like, bro, I'm I with you, man. These guys. Yeah, it's the same with me. I mean, because it's like, it's like every day you do it, um, you get more and more confident in it, in it, and you get you keep you keep getting put into these situations where you're like, 
And when they say, this guy's supposed to be the great guy, I wasn't impressed. Like, okay, well, let me go do my thing, you know? And it's it, nobody val no one validates you in this game so you don't so know. hard right so it's it's a thing that you have to go oh shit i am good you know what i mean and then so i would say within the last year or two that i've yeah. been especially like even in my in my writing my because i'll read pilots that are getting made and i'm like this is getting made yeah huh? yeah wow all right my, well my idea wasn't bad because this is this is really thin right? Yeah, right and then and then um and the same with stand-up i'll go back and listen to some of my old material and i'm like man i was that shit was fire yeah so you it's kind of like you know you kind of grow into it and like the older i get the more i am okay with my opinions and how i feel about something because because that's the other thing you get shy about saying what you there are people who just say shit just to be saying shit, and I never wanted to be that person. But now if I see someone's act, I can tell you why that doesn't connect with me. I can tell you who it might connect with, but I, but I, but I, f I feel you. The older I get, the more secure I am. I can. I've been doing. Comedy. I've been watching comedy so much. I can pretty much tell you what their act's going to be as they walk on stage. I can tell you how long they've been doing it. <laughs> yeah. When I hear when I hear the topics and what they're talking about, I mean, I can hear how long they've been doing and it. And that's the funny thing about comedy yeah. right now. And I want to get into some of your great comedy stories real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That a lot. I will tell you that these younger guys, like we're talking, like you'll meet a kid you, and you're like, wow, that he, he's getting pretty big laughs. How old, how old are you, 23? And you're like, how is that possible? And then you realize that these kids are growing up mm -hmm. with YouTube. Oh, yeah. And they're analyzing YouTube and they're mm -hmm. learning cadences. So then they know how to da, 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 did that. And they know how to <laughs> deliver it. But, and, and it's nothing against them because they're doing great for 23. You yeah. know, and it's just like, but it's well polished dog do, shit. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like how yeah. when, when the internet poker players started getting real big, and then all of a sudden these young guys are just internet poker playing since the time they were 10 years yeah. old. Just remember, do you remember? And then they go ball? play real poker and they're just murderers because mm -hmm. they, like, there's this girl named Taylor Thompson who I've said before is like, I call oh, her yeah. future. I, yeah. I met her. Um, she works I, hard, man. Dude, she works hard. She played churches is for she, like 10 funny? years is before she, she started doing stand. Is she funny? I'm gonna tell yeah. you what, man. I, I, I think I, she I, is. I talked to her. I go, oh, what's your name? I seen you around. She says Taylor Thomas, and we added each other on Facebook outside the main room. This was four days ago. You was trying to hit. No, I think she's, she's very shy, pretty. Dude. She's, she's very shy. pretty. I'm gonna tell you I, what, I, I like that face. She's very pretty. Um, but we were we were just talking cool and just had a heart to heart. And she was like, "This place scares me." I was like, "It terrifies me." She's like, "But you work here." I'm like, "Every day I walk in here, yeah. someone's talking shit to me or trying to fuck me up." And so she goes, "Thank you for saying that." I brought like three people over. I go, "Hey, I think it was Tebow." Like three people. I'm like, "Hey, can I ask you something? Does this place scare you?" They go, "Oh, it terrifies me." And she's like, "Oh my god, really?" I'm like, "It scares everybody here, and the people that say they're not scared of it are lying or stoned." You know, I'm gonna tell you what, man. Uh, I think I first saw her on Last Comic Stand, and I went to a taping of it, and she was the youngest person going up. And I saw her perform, and I was like, "There's no way she's this confident that at this age, because she sounded to me like a 40 year old white guy." Dude, she does really. The hold on, bro, bro. I don't, don't Y'all can't cut me off because I'm not. I'm okay, not dissing bad. her. I'm We're not working. dissing her. No, this no, comes no, around. No. I'm enough. with you. So I was like, she sounds like a 40 year old white guy. Like, is she borrowing like a cadence of like a road comic who just gave up? Because I knew a few Chicago guys that had that same energy and that same point of view. And I'm looking at her material. I'm like, this is something ain't, something ain't. Then I'm doing this MTV2 pilot. I'm writing on it. And they bring in, because MTV2, they bring in her like for the age group. So I'm skeptical. I'm going to see, what, what, what's she going to do here? When I tell you she came prepared, she was the same person that I saw on stage. And she ran laps around damn near everybody else that was auditioning for this joint. I was like, she's the truth, man. Like, like I agree with you. She's the true, like she blew me away. But she's when I future. first, when I first saw and saw oh she was, I was like, I, uh huh. But yo, she's good money. When she's, I, yeah, yeah. I, she was working with. Never seen her me mm -hmm. at the uh, Madhouse. They had her hosting, and I, uh -huh. you know, I love comedy. I'm like a weird guy. I'm like, I'm big on comedians. Like, right. if I could ever tell a young comic mm -hmm. something I learned, so they don't make the same mistake. You're, you do that for me. You do. I'll tell them even yeah. if they're not asking. <laughs> and I just go up to talk to her and I say hi, and she kind of like is weird with me, and she kind of walks out. I'm like. What the fuck is this? Yeah. And, and you know, and I was like, okay, whatever. And then I walked her go up, and she starts doing like, like you said, she is. Her premises are like, I go to Taco Bell, and I'm like, well, she's 21. That's right. what she knows. But her crowd work is that of like a fucking seasoned yeah. comic who's been doing the road forever. I'm like, this chick is amazing. And then it turns out the reason she was like that is because she's super insecure. Yeah. And you know, she's like. 
she's a comic, and we yeah. all have fucking weird shit going on in our skull. But man, like everything about her leads up that that shit could go huge. She's the truth, man. She's, she's the, the truth. truth. I call her. I call every time I yeah. see I see her tweet. I do some hashtag the future. That's yeah. what I say about. That's her. funny. Yeah, she's dope, man. So you you are yeah. an amazing person because you know. I, I love you know you and I always go up around the same yeah, time. Man, I don't know does. why you go up as late as I do. <laughs> I know why I go up that right, late. Right. I don't know why you go up that that's late. That's hilarious. And I yeah, think man. that it's because you are so strong. Yeah. I do think that's it. And I think that people bitch and moan when they gotta file something that makes them work. That's just my opinion. Right, right. That's why you have to go so late. And uh, but man, you know, I, you know, you tell me you went out with Russell Peters. You, you've gone out with a lot of great comics. Yeah, like, man. You've been taking on the road a lot, huh? Not a lot, not a lot. That was one. That was one six week moment in time. You know what I mean? I haven't been taking out a lot. I, I like to tell myself it is because I am strong. And I, you know, I used to watch some of the. So every 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 headliner has a. I mean, I'm trying to get to be a headliner. And the business changed, so I have. You the can skill headline set. though. I have the skill set. I can totally headline, yeah, but too. I don't know my audience. Yeah. That's why I'm. 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 That's why I'm giving away free stuff, trying to find out who my audience is. I love that idea, that dude. Thing. And How easy that? Just I'm, text it. Yeah, just text. You know, comedy to four four two two two. I'm serious. I hate to be that dude, <laughs> no, but I'm serious. Dude. You can sell every sentence. Text comedy to four four two 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 because I'm trying to find out where the people are. Who wants to come see me tour? Because that's how the business has changed. While I was out performing in all 50 states, I, I didn't do Montana, but I did all 49 states. Um, it, it, you know, YouTube became new open mic. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, Twitter and all that stuff. And I, I'm not, I'm not really strong in those areas number wise yet. But now I'm, I'm, I'm getting up. Like my Facebook is up. I'm, you know, I'm at almost 12,000 on my Facebook, which is good for me. No, you that's know? great. I'm, and, I'm uh, trying to get that going. Yeah, man. All really oh, that's important. That. But I just, I want to have, but I want to have some kind of community to where I can just be like, hey, I'm coming to your city, and 2,500 people yeah. want to come see me. Wow, that's, that's all I need, man. I just want to be self-sufficient because I know what I'm saying, and I come up with new stuff every year. I'm, yeah, I don't have a always, fixed act. Always funny, Owen. Thanks, man. So it's just that's just what I want to do, man. And uh, um, you know, to take care of me and my family. Man. No, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Wife yeah. is super cool. Thanks, like, yeah, man. you're a good Our, dude, man. Can I can Steve I cut in? Is, real, what? Can I cut in real quick? Yeah. yeah. Oh no. He has a story. Yeah, that's why I wanted to get mm -hmm. to. Oh, okay. Great minds think said, alike. That, uh, you know, <laughs> Steve for about three weeks been like, we got to get Owen Smith out oh, here. I'm like, great. yeah, of course, of course. I don't even know, know when I told you this story. Well, okay, here's the good thing about working at the store. You get to mm -hmm. see people just in transit. Like, maybe if I was at a show and we didn't know each other, I'd never right. get next to you to talk to you. But, like, hey, Owen, you're on in 15. You're kind of just sitting around. Yeah. So what's up with you? I'm like, what's up? And then natural, It's that's. The, I would say the best thing of working at the store is being able to talk to people that you wouldn't be able to talk to. You know, for me, two, one, one to two years into stand-up, yeah. you and I wouldn't be in the same rooms or I wouldn't be in the same green rooms with you but right. you're waiting to go on so what's up and we built a friendship and yeah. you know I, I have that with a lot of people because of working at the stores so it's, it's really great but you know I would never hear this story I've known you for a couple years yeah. I, mean, I would never hear this story out of you for like hey what's up what's up alright cool right. but we're, we're waiting to go on we're bitching about some <laughs> I won't say what <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. bitching about okay alright <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah! Are you still with them? <laughs> no, dude. Can I tell that really quick? Okay, yeah, yeah, tell it. Dude, so I, oh my I god, that's so hilarious. We yeah, were all with them. Yeah, one so year wasted. Right. Are you still, oh. and one year wasted. Fuck so, so we wasted. all had the yeah. same management, right? Yeah. Yeah. Agency. Agency. agency, agency, agency. So we all got rep by the same agency. That's O and me and Sam. And yeah. so we're kind of like they just went a wall. We're kind of like, what's up with that? What's up? have you heard? So we're all, there's probably about eight or ten <laughs> comics on this roster, and maybe eight some or ten. She's like. I'm gonna pick up eight, and she ended up picking like thirty yeah, comics. Yeah, all of us. Well, I'm checking in with everybody, going, "Hey, are you going out for shit?" Every once in a while, someone's like, "Yeah, I got a pilot reading or a voiceover audition, but no nothing's happening." So then we're all sitting there. You're. <laughs> this is the night that you told me the Mitch story. So we're all sitting there, just <laughs> oh, bitch. I think that this actually cracked open because okay. we were so pissed yeah. and, and laughing so hard yeah. that 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 story came out. But we're sitting there, and some kid comes in, and he goes. Hey, I'm um, I'm a new agent and uh, uh, I just like to get into the main room if there's 400 people in there. And I go, oh man, you can't. Go, I go, where are you with? He goes, well, I'm with Elevate. I, I represent all the comedians. And I go, uh, then you rep me. And then yeah, Owen no. goes, and me too. And right. then Ari Manis goes, me too. Do you rep us? And the kid goes, well, hold on. I, I, I'm like, well, let's see a business card. He had a business card, someone else's business card with his uh, name man. crossed out. No, no, no. So then Owen is who's about to go on in five goes, or ten and goes, huh. 
Like, I see you in your head, like, shaking shaking your head. But be professional. Your wife's off in the distance. Right. You're, be, you're all dressed nice. You know, you're pro. It's Saturday night, and, and I see Owen going, I'm going, I'm pissed, and I've only been in this game for a little bit, and Owen's just shaking his head, right? And we're not talking about it. And, 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 and he gives you the business card, and you kind of look at it, and you're like, trying not to react. You're like, all right, thanks, bro, like, being cool. And I'm like, damn, this kid's just like, this is who's repping us? And so he leaves, and then we all kind of go, wow, like, what? And, and then the guy comes runs back in he goes sorry dude I, I i can't i can't i can't come in my roommate's got my car i gotta go out to roommate dude we're quiet and he just goes our agents got roommates homie <laughs> <laughs> our agents got roommates homie and, and i dude i was laughing so hard and you were just like like oh and you're on in three and you're like that's cool my agent has That's roommates, roommates homie. Yeah, and, 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 so, and so we started laughing, and he was so bummed. I see you at the Nerdist. You know, he come to my show. Like, yeah. like a month later, I go, what's up? Oh, and you go, roommates, man. Roommates. <laughs> roommates. Man. That was the next word out of your mouth. And your wife's even like, oh, he's talking about that again. Yeah. Like, yeah roommates, not a good bro. Sign, bro. So, so, so funny, uh, So he tells me an awesome story. Didn't know that you were Mitch Hedberg's really good friend. Yeah, we were. We had, um, I'm just telling you how we met. We met at um, Chicago Comedy Festival. And, uh. I really desperately wanted uh, three arts to rep me. <laughs> what year was it? Oh, fuck. Maybe late 90s, man. Late 90s. 97, maybe? 97, 98? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Y'all could look it up, though. Whenever the Chicago comedy, it wasn't around long. And um, and um, um, that's when I met Mitch, and I really wanted, uh, and Dave Becky was there. <laughs> I remember, I remember Mitch introduced me to Dave Becky, and I thought I'm about to get, I'm about to get signed with the yards. Nothing. Yeah. Like, didn't make a damn. People have been introducing me to that man for years, and he's like, ah, I got Kevin Hart now. Beat it. You know, that's basically wow. that's that's not what he says, but that's kind of yeah. like. So, um, met Mitch there, and we used for some reason we clicked. Man, I don't remember the inciting incident, but I I know he's he was very competitive. And he saw me on stage, and I was I was killing. I remember you said I, I said competitive because he seemed so good vibe. But you, you, that was what hooked me into the story. I'm like Mitch yeah. Hedberg, competitive. Really? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, isn't that funny? Like oh, yeah. he was like oh yeah. Because I went up before him on one show, <laughs> and I could be murky in the, the timeline. This could have been when he was back independently, and I came down to say what's up, and he threw me up. Or I ended up featuring or something. And when I tell you I was slaying, like it was ridiculous. And then uh, he at the end he was like. You made me work. Yeah. That's good. That's good shit. You made me work. Yeah, man. So then we hung out. We were walking around and in, in, uh and in, and in, in, he told he was telling me great stories. Like he was like, Oh, I'm about to be rich. I go, What's up? He goes, crazy, man. And he pulls out this Velcro wallet, <laughs> opens it up, and hands me a ring. He goes, You see this ring? When I was living in Seattle. I used to I used to have to pawn this ring to oh. to, to eat. I used to have to pawn this ring so I could get something to eat, get a sandwich or something. Then when I got enough money from a stand up gig, I would buy it back. Wow. Now I'm never gonna have to do that again. I'm about to be rich. So he was like, I need a shirt for my for this half hour special I'm about to do for Comedy Central. So wow. I knew all the spots, so we went to this little boutique store. And I picked out the shirt that he wore in that 30 minute special. Really? Oh, how cool. Yeah, 30 That's minute special so cool. that hit that blew him up. We sits down and he just fucking just does his act like fuck it. You know? What shirt was it? It's black. It's like this black cool button down the front shirt. He was like, I like this. Wow. He got the shirt. And uh and then um I didn't it was weird, man. I didn't pay any attention. Like we would just meet, right? At the Chicago Comedy Festival, I had a gig in Minnesota and he lived in Minnesota. So I drove, like, we road tripped to Minnesota, and I spent the night in uh, the house he grew up in, in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. I met his parents. I think I slept in his bed, but that's where I, like, learned, and he slept someplace else. I can't remember. <laughs> wow. But he, that's where I learned more about him. Like, he, on the road, he was a chef. He was a, a, a chef. He was, like, working at, I want to say, I, I, I might fuck it up. Please forgive me, man. I have not, I did not. I purposely didn't do research to tell this story. I just it's all good. Yeah, how I yeah, feel we it. love it. No, that's I how think our there's no like, fact checking on yeah, that. Yeah, he was like show. a short order cook, but he was real good at that. I Man, he you know wanted to do comedy and you know we, we you know bullshit like that. And then um um I remember because then he, at Montreal he got this huge he got the biggest development deal in a long time. That's what he was talking about. I'm about to be rich. He was waiting mm -hmm. for the money to come in for that. Wow. So he had just done Montreal. Did you hear how that Montreal had gone? 
that the guy before him from yeah. Seattle goes fucking crazy on everybody wow. and is yelling at the industry, fuck you, I don't need your money, I want to fucking work with you. Bombs. He gets off. Mitch Hedberg walks up, and his first thing is like, I'd love to work with you guys. And the place just explodes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's great. a pro move. It's great, man. And so, um, so that that was so we would interact like that, right? No, 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 man, his family's family is so sweet. Everybody was very cool. I did my shows. He did whatever he did. Next thing I know, we meet in Houston, right? Um, and he had some acid, right? <laughs> and, uh, and what I loved about Mitch is because you got to understand where I was coming from. Like, I graduated from the University of Notre Dame. So I think, I don't know why we connected, but I feel like it may have been something. I know why I was drawn to him. I went to Notre Dame, and I, and I loved my time there, and uh, I'm happy to be a graduate from there. But I knew I was going to be a comedian since I was nine years old. Wow. So when I get out of college, <laughs> I'm doing stand-up comedy. Artistically, I felt four years behind. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because in Notre Dame, I learned how to be um, um, uh, uh, an employee. I learned how to be... Uh, malleable. I learned how to be, you know what I mean? I learned how to Play get the a, game. I learned how to get a job. Like I yeah. learned all that shit, but I didn't learn. I wasn't developing being like primal and mm -hmm. you know, just going after stuff and and um the real world. Just yeah. I and I wasn't I wasn't developing. I felt like the artist in me was stymied, right? So when I met Mitch, he was somebody who was a cook and he's like, fuck it man. He lived in a van. Him and Doug Stanhope were up there. And he was pawning rings, and he was by any means necessary. I'm doing this shit, mm -hmm. and I always, I was coming from, you know, I want my comedy to be comfortable, mm -hmm. but comedy is like life; it's not comfortable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I was drawn to, you know, oh shit, you're you're an artist. The realness of him. Yeah, and I think he was drawn to, um, he saw that in me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I also wasn't, um. I wasn't like I wasn't judgmental. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. I didn't want anything from him. Competitive. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want it. I mean, I didn't. I didn't need anything. We, we were just hanging. You know. Right. What I mean? Wow. That's so cool. People pick. I up didn't on want that. him to yeah. put me on. I didn't want him to put. I was. Ah, I'm good. You know. Yeah. The, the only dumb thing as a as a youngster, I thought. You know, if Dave Becky saw me before, <laughs> he would manage me because I knew early on that three yards was going to be what three yards was. I just could feel it, and uh, but I just I never knew how to do that tap dance to get you know, a manager, whatever. And uh, so then, uh, so now we in Houston. I think I'm maybe 26, right? And I was still going through that, like, I was going through, when you come out of Notre Dame, when you grow up, I grew up in a black neighborhood, then you get thrust into an all-white environment, mostly white environment like Notre Dame. Then you come back out into life. I was just like, who am I? Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of artist am I? Who? What kind of person am I? Like, right. what the fuck, right? Right. And I was just in that place. And uh, so I knew how to get a standing ovation, but I wasn't saying shit, right? So mm -hmm. I, because I learned how to perform early on, performing in all these black rooms, I knew how to perform, but I had no substance, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just going through this, who the fuck am I? So I bump into Mitch in Houston. He's got this acid. I've never taken acid before. At that time, I think I only did ecstasy with a guy named Mick Bettencorp. He used to sell it. Yeah. Now, now Mick, it, Mick sold me, or he gave it to me, but he used to sell it before. Now he's making money writing crime shows and shit. Yeah. No way. An <laughs> ecstasy oh. dealer to crime Mick, show. Mick, 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 no. Mick is fantastic. No. Really? You gotta have no. money. He got stories for days. That's oh, my really? man. Let's get him on. Yeah. Of but Mick used Sounds to give money. me ecstasy uh, in uh, uh, when I lived in Chicago, and every time I took it, I woke up with an ugly girl. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I did no it, judgment. I did it. And I like, it like three times. I was like, "This ain't ecstasy." What? Who fuck named this? <laughs> Every time I woke up with an ugly chick, man. And um, cause you just want to make out. Yeah, you just wanted to be it with somebody. Crazy, man. and I'm bringing them to my spy. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> what does I say about me? I was going through all this dumb shit. And so then, That's great. so I done ecstasy. I think I, I did weed a little bit, but that was the extent of it, right? You not a weed smoker? Nah, man. I never really been a heavy um. Vice person, I think because because of Lynn Bias. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I never did cocaine because of Lynn Bias. That's if crazy. You, if you guys are young guys, Google Lynn Bias. He was all muscle. He was the only dude, I think, personally, who could handle Jordan. 100%. ACC. Yeah. And he was from my neighborhood, right? And when he went to the he's NBA. He's from your neighborhood? Yeah, man. He's from PG. He's from D.C., Baltimore, Maryland. He's from Maryland, D.C. area. Holy shit. He went to, I can't DC's remember. DC's rough, huh? 
It, yeah, it's like any city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so when he died of a cocaine overdose, I was like, if he can't take it, I yeah. ain't fucking wow. with that. So I never, I so it was like it was just a seed as a right, young kid. Right, like right, I don't right. even want to. Uh, How old were you when it happened? I was young. I was maybe shit, man. I don't know the math. Ten, eleven. Wow. Twelve, maybe. You just that, got in there early enough. Yeah, yeah. So I never fucked with it like that. So, so I was hesitant to fuck with this acid. He had like a little stamp that acid you lick. Acid next level shit. Check this out. He goes. He says, "Oh, <laughs> when I decided I wanted to do comedy, I took acid and I got my notebook." And everything I saw, I wrote. <laughs> like, that's how he said it, right? <laughs> all of our <laughs> listeners now are like, okay, that's all I have so, to do. And so I was like, I want to be funny like that. I want to see some shit. <laughs> Fuck it. And I felt safe around Mitch, you know. And so um, we, next thing I know, we're in a hotel room. And I don't, and I, and I, I remember the, the dealer, the woman who sold it to him, came by the hotel room to party that's the word they used to party and she was a regular looking chick a little maybe 15 20 pounds overweight not even second show friday would you even try to fuck you know what i mean yeah. but she was but she was cool she had a nice little energy right so we take the acid right we, lick <laughs> the, we all eat and take the acid we're in the hotel room it's, it's two double beds right and um i start the first thing i realize is i go oh shit this is where cartoons come from. <laughs> Which Every is something to Everything I saw was like cartoons. <laughs> like, it was <laughs> insane. And this is crazy, man. Mitch had a video camera. So this motherfucker is videotaping me. <laughs> and I'm saying to camera. I'm saying <gasps> shit. I still remember it vividly. I'm like, why is the letter G, G? <laughs> Good question. Who said the letter F sounded like F? Why is k, k Why are there two k? Why is green green? Who said green is green? Who said blue is blue? <laughs> why is blue? Who came down and decided these things? Who are things? What are things? Who are why? Why are who? Why? I was doing that. I was doing like a jazz scat. <laughs> I never forget. Mitch was taping me, and he just goes pulls the camera aside. He goes, "You should do this on stage, man." <laughs> oh. You should do this on stage. Then he keeps taping me. Oh, stage, man. stage, I love this. stage, stage is where we are. Stage is where we express. Stage is what we do. Stage is who I am. Like I was like, ah, <laughs> I was getting into it. I'm sweating. I'm going off. I'm flowing. I'm I'm flowing, man. I'm getting my shit on. I'm performing for this camera. And then all of a sudden, I started going pussy. I want some. Like I started saying that real low, and I and I could remember two phone numbers by heart, my mom's and this girl I was dating, right? And this is when you use phone cards, so you had to remember like thirty numbers. <laughs> I remember that. So I'm dialing on the hotel phone, and I'm in one bed, and I'm dialing on the hotel phone on I'm acid, on acid, son. And every number is like boop. The sound is boop, boop, boop. You hear everything. You seeing shit. Boop, 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 boop. Like everything is magnified. Pussy. That's all I'm thinking. Pussy. And she answers the phone, hello. And I'm just like, thank God it's not my mom. I go, what you doing? She's like, what you doing? Where you at? Where you going? I want your pussy. And I'm not a big shit talker like that. I'm not a big for some reason. And once you get a word, you can't stop saying it. And I and then I was also convincing her that this, and so she was like, "Where is that? Where are you? Are you high?" And I couldn't lie. I was like, "Yeah, but don't worry about that. You tell me what that pussy is." <laughs> it was so crazy, man. And she was like, "Oh my god!" She was like, "Oh my god!" Like, "Why are you? Why are you acting like this?" And she was like, "She was like, where are you? I'm in this hotel room." Now while I'm talking to her, I look out the corner of my eye. I see Mitch, and he has his shirt off. And I just see his upper torso, <laughs> like, humping, right? And I look over. He is fucking the fat drug dealer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was like an orgy broke out, but I wasn't invited. Like, I'm on the double bed talking to my girl about pussy, right? And I see him humping her. I start humping my bed. Like, <laughs> 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 I'm funny, somebody. It's all he over there. 
talking to this fat chick. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then I'm over here, and I'm talking to her about pussy. And then she said, where are you? I said, I'm on the second floor. She said, oh, my God, don't do nothing crazy. Don't jump. And I remember saying, bitch, I'm on the second floor. Like that. And I was like, you fucking up my high, bitch. And I... And then I and I never called a woman a bitch like comedically. <laughs> I did it. So then I was like, I'm sorry I called you bitch. I went and then I just hung up the phone on her, right? And then I just remember my body just started shaking, right? It, the whole body like just started shaking, and I'm sweating and I'm shaking and I was just shaking like really fast. And then I just started sweating a whole lot, and it was like my body like a whole bunch of wet shit. Just it was like I peed on myself, but no pee. It was like actual sweat came off of oh me. Oh my god. The acid left my body and I just like slept on the bed. I don't know where the, the girl went. And shit was cool. That trip was incredible. I've never done it again. Um the next day, me and Mitch, I don't remember what we did. If we got something to eat or whatever, we kinda just went our separate ways. I had to do a gig. And I know he was performing at whatever the big club in Houston is. And uh and that was that was it. That was, you know, pretty much it. And then what we used to do is then I started doing a lot of colleges, and so was he. And we would piggyback. And if he knew I was coming, he would leave a note for me. And if I knew he was coming, I would leave a note for him. And in the, the in the campus somewhere. Yeah. In so, like the green oh, that's so they would be yeah, like, so they'd be cool. like, yo, uh, they were like, you know, Mitch, Mitch Hedberg, he left this for you. And I read it, and they'd be like, yo, kill it or something like that. Oh, you know. I love that. And so. I think uh, what's the name of the college I was doing? Fuck, I had it wasn't Shippensburg, it was, but it was somewhere in Pennsylvania. I was doing this run, and he had just done it, and it was the day he passed. Oh, and the day he passed, I had to perform that night. Oh man, and it was at a school where he left a note for me. Oh, oh my and God, I Owen! Forget, well, like when I opened the note, I just, I just, I couldn't take it, man. I'm tearing up right now just thinking about it. That's and I, so I mean, tragic. I knew he had his vices, you know what I'm saying? But he was, he was always a, you know, a good dude, you know, um, family man. And at this, at this point in time, he was married, lovely wife. Um, he just, he, he always did, you know, uh, what he wanted to do how he wanted to do it, and it affected the least amount of people. You know what I'm saying? You like, had that note? Nah, man, I, I was too, I, I didn't even think of it like that. Like, oh. when I saw it, I was just like, because you got to understand, like, to me, he was my friend. Yes. So uh, yes. it wasn't a an Historic, item to collect. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I was worried for his, I just, I know he, he just got married not that long ago. Oh. He, was, he was just, like, carving out his life as an artist and as a family man and how he was going to navigate through this business because he went through that deal shit where he was like oh shit they don't really want me they just want you know they want something else so he was figuring that out and at yeah. that time i think he was going to do his own movie he was going to do he was in the process of editing or doing something else independently that he was that he was doing and you know that was it man that was my friend and so he he, I'm, I'm forever grateful that he, you know, that we had those moments together. You know what I mean? That was that was awesome, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, That's crazy. Man. Yeah, man. I I never really told anybody that story. I I that was a beautiful story, and the way you told it, like with the acid stuff. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, I was if, going if, on. If any of our fans, because they, they'll make like memes and they'll make like sound bites. <laughs> if you want to make a little, uh, if, if if a fan out there wants to make, is that cool with you? Like, sure, like, please, like whatever. A Fifteen seconds, something that we could put tag on Instagram. In. Tag him in it where, where he's going. Pussy. Yeah, man. Pussy oh, acid. Beep, boop, boop. I just saw it right there. Our fans do that sometimes, man. and they hit it really. They they they. they a couple guys do it real That's good, funny. and it's funny. I'll laugh at it real yeah. hard. So I was saying every syllable of every word. Yeah. Everything was like it was. It was like I could see it, and it was so funny because at that time I was living a life where I was not. Ex I was not like paying attention to every little thing, and then every little thing was there, and I just wanted to. Do it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Dude, um, no, that's that shit. My pants. I'll tell you that story. I think I got time. You could. Yeah, minutes, you I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah man. Minutes. So then, we'll end with it. A couple of years later, <laughs> now, I don't know if it's coming. Maybe six months later, I was in St. Louis uh, with this big college comedian, and he was um, 
He was like, hey, man. People don't understand. There are some comics out there yeah. that just destroy the the, destroy. the college. Set. I don't I mean, understand just that. Yeah. I don't know about that. Making money. Dude, I'm telling you, man. I'm I, out of that. I, I don't know about, about that. that. Yeah, man. I, t- I tried to put you on there before. All you need is an hour, or if not, organize a tour. Okay. And you can make more in one night than you make in a week. And now you may be able to turn that into an actual audience with Twitter and all I that. I swear yeah. a lot. I'm real dirty. Is that okay? Now, it depends. At, 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 at public schools, yes, that's okay. Oh, yeah. At private universities, you gotta understand the parents are paying forty to sixty grand a year to yeah, protect okay. their kids from from, from that <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, from people so, like you, you yeah, can say it. So no. No. You're but, allowed to be a, a janitor at these yeah, colleges. Yeah, but at public universities, it's it's cool. it's whatever it is. But uh, so um uh, so I'm in St. Louis with this dude. I can't, I won't say his name. I should say his name, but his name is Petty. But uh, he was um. <coughs> really an asshole to me under the guys that he was being cool like he was always bragging but he was like yo man I'm about to take some shrooms man you want to take some shrooms and i was like what the fuck are those and he pulls out a bag of mushrooms and i was like ah fuck it and so i, I don't know why i did it but i think i was still in that place of, and you performed already yeah i didn't have a show that day okay i didn't have a show that my show was the next day actually so i was oh early. shit so, is this a famous comedian no, uh, he's just uh, a no. Co- he's a big comic. No, yeah, he, but he yeah, makes yeah. a lot of money in the yeah. Midwest. Yeah. Now he's doing corporates. He's outgrown colleges, and he's you know I guess a he's a good dude. Yeah. But at the time, um, I take these mushrooms, and then we go to a St. Louis Cardinals game, and I'm like, man, these mushrooms was bullshit. I ain't feel nothing. And while we at the game, <laughs> one of the dudes hits the ball, and I'm like, why does that ball look like a titty? And then I just remember trying to lick it, like, <laughs> like I had my tongue out. I was trying, oh, no. trying to put the ball in front of my mouth. Now. I was trying, I I was trying to see. lick a ball and it goes down. No. And I keep, but I keep telling them, I go, man, these these mushrooms ain't shit, man. That's what's and, then, and then when we and then when we leave him, I was doing the fucking Hitler march because the sidewalk looked like it was stepping up, so I kept <laughs> doing. The and goose then, step, yeah. yeah, the goose step, and um, and so then I, I we get back to his spot, and he goes, "Man, you was talking about these mushrooms, it's bullshit. You want to take some more?" I was like, "Yeah." Oh, and I, all I had, and I had a hot dog at the park, right? <laughs> so I, I double shroom my first time ever. That's hardcore shit, man. And so this is at the time when Sinbad was doing those uh comedy concerts in Aruba, and this dude for some reason on his cable he kept turning everything black. So I'm high as shit now. So the movie Crook, the movie Crooklyn is on. And Steve White's scene. Steve White is a comedian who's yeah. in real estate. Now he's back in comedy. He is um, on. And I'm talking to Steve like I know him. Steve. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Oh, shit. You do your shit, Steve. I know. That's my man. Then he turned to Sinbad. And it's Lottie Dottie. It's Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick performing Lottie Dottie. And I'm looking at it. And I'm singing the song. And I'm dancing with it. And uh, I'm going hard. This motherfucker don't even have the sound on. Like, I, <laughs> I, I hear it like it's on. He's oh laughing God. at me, right? Then the hot dog that I had, I had to take a shit. It was ready to come out. So I go into the <laughs> bathroom. I open the toilet. The toilet seat had teeth. Like, in my <laughs> mind, the toilet <laughs> yes. seat had teeth. And I'm like, I ain't, I ain't shit, fuck that. I ain't sitting in that. <laughs> that. So I remember going back out into the living room. And uh, and he just got, and he kept bragging about. It. He just bought a brand new white couch, and he had a brand new white carpet. He kept bragging about it and how much money he made. And kept bragging about. it. And when you're on shrooms, you see through that ego shit, right? All that shit. Yeah. So I'm dancing, right, and just dancing the the, the Sinbad concert and shit. And then um, I start shaking again, and I remember that shake from doing acid. I go, oh, it's about to leave my system, and I get real hot for some reason, and I'm like, oh, god, man, this is a little different, you know. And I just sit down on the couch, the white couch. It just feels cooler sitting down. And I just shit my pants, son. That hot dog <laughs> came out. Oh, my I God. I shit all over that brand new white oh carpet. Oh, my God. Look, I, I go down on the floor because it's cooler. I'm shitting on the white carpet. Oh. The white couch got it. And he comes back in the room. He goes, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? And I remember, and I remember being in his shower, right, with one sock on, one sock off. Like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, man. 
<laughs> and I remember waking up like in his bed, like in in one of his guest rooms bed, and I remember I had shit crumbs like on my chest. <laughs> oh like, my real god! Real talk, son. I was like, how the fuck did they get on my chest? So I pluck them off. Shit flakes. I'm humiliated, but for some reason I didn't care. It was like a weird thing. And I walk downstairs, and he has a bucket of water, and the water is shitty brown. He's been trying to, like, brush oh. all the stuff. Out. How the fuck I'm going to tell my wife, man? Like, he's been up all night trying to clean up my shit. Oh. And I just was like, sorry, man. <laughs> got bounced. And I just walked out, got into my rental car, and drove back to my hotel, and we've never spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I think one Christmas, like, this is back when we had answering machines. I got a call one time, and he just went, boop, and I just heard, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it was him. I don't know. And that was it, man. Yeah, and I never, so I've never done shrooms since that day or, or acid. I just, I used to smoke weed a little bit with Leslie Jones yeah. um, when she was out here, and that's that's pretty much the bulk of it. Wow, well, dude. Well, that was yeah. awesome, You man. crushed it. Crushed it. Oh, knocked thanks, it out of the park. So once thanks, again, man. where are we texting to and what Text are we texting? Text the word comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y, to 44222. I'm telling you, man, when I get it, I'm going to send you some stuff, and I'm, I'm going to consistently send you stuff. I'm constantly creating. I got a new album coming out on iTunes called Good Luck, Everybody. I'm going to send you four tracks from that. I'm going to send you a half-hour taping from the hour special that I did on iPhones. You remember I did that. I bought 10 iPhones, shot this comedy special, then I returned the iPhones. <laughs> Hilarious. It's great. It's great. <laughs> so I'm going to send you some stuff from that, and and I got some more stuff. Like him on, on Facebook? Yeah, and, all you know, that. Are you, you're, you're approachable, right? If you're doing a show, yeah, come up. up. You guys, Say you heard me on this. International Bad Boys, because they, they always come up to me and oh, Sam dope. and stuff. Like at the Comedy Store, we yeah. have a lot of listeners that, that frequent the Comedy Store. So go up to Oni's real cool and just tell him you love the story and give him some love. Give him a big yeah, hug. Yeah, my man. Really great, awesome, man. Oh, Thank you, Owen. Thank, Thank you so much. You knocked out the park. This podcast episodes we ever had i, I would agree man. with that how could you beat that the, the story you told off the top to two back-to-back -to -back owen stories like we're done yeah <laughs> what else we got i'm sorry we're, that's it well guys it's another fun episode next week i think we have doc on and then we have oh. john Huck. doc's gonna be tell just a little teaser doc uh, uh who parks the cars at the comedy store funny comic uh, funny comic funny guy funny. good guy yes sir jumped into a car uh, didn't know Suge Knight was in the back <laughs> and goes, oh, I'm sorry. And Suge goes, nah, stay. I got to talk to someone and just told him everything. Oh! Yeah, so that, that's don't tell anybody because I don't want anyone to grab him before. No, no, we got him. Oh, zip it, zip yeah. it. All right, so next week, oh! uh, and you then mean, after that is John Huck. He's got some great stories wow. about, uh, he told me some crazy shit in La Jolla. Guys, like our, fan, our Facebook Smith. page, Owen Smith. Crush we love it. you guys. Thank you so much for Thanks. listening. Hey, guys, if you like our show, tell your friends, yeah. spread the word. The only way this thing grows is if you guys tell some international bad boys like us on Facebook tweet at us talk some shit talk good tweet let's at Owen the, the yeah, yeah let us know guys we, we love our fans come up to me Steve Randolph say what's up to me we love hearing it man we All do this right, for guys. you guys this is the international bad boys we'll see you next week take care everybody international bad boys are not at home they're shitting their pants on acid <laughs>